Hello everyone. Uh, Chi Seng recently started a new training video series called uh, GAI, and uh, I've been enjoying his tutorial so much. And uh, I decide to have a another follow up video tutorial that is a slight variation from his version, but uh, using some of the um, you know Python module my research group has been developing, and also integrating that into. Uh, our own stack repo. So uh, the example that I'm going to be uh, doing today is uh, from this website, goai.gishub.org website. If you go there, go to example, and uh, Chi Seng uh, recorded a video about this download data where you can install packages, import library, uh, defining, defining bounding boxes, downloading native imagery, building data, and uh, overlay that um, using leaf map packages. So uh, I really enjoyed the video, like I mentioned earlier. And I thought that uh, there are slight variation that I can do and decide to make this video. So um, I'm not going to be explaining how to install these uh, Geo, Geo AI packages. Uh, there is going to be a uh, separate video that has been already uploaded by Chi Seng. Uh, you can um, follow the video, and this video is assuming that uh, you already have that Python packages, or uh, GUI packages has been installed. In my case, uh, if I do conda environment list, as you can see here, I already uh, created a new virtual environment called the Geo AI, and all those you know, installation um, uh, tutorial has been followed. So if you go here, installation, there are you know, multiple steps that you need to do. In my case, I have done this already in this uh, virtual environment that I created and already activated that virtual environment. So from here, I'm going to Jupyter Lab to start a Jupyter Notebook instance. And from here, essentially, the example that I'm going to be following is uh, this D2S Geo AI tutorial 01 uh, Jupyter Notebook file. Uh, in order for you to access this one, uh, we actually have a GitHub repo, uh, GDSL Lab. This is my uh, research group's uh, organization. We also have a D2Spy. Uh, repository. Uh, this is an uh, actually data to science Python module that we've been developing, and um, we I also uploaded here into you know, tutorial. If you click this uh, D2S GUI tutorial on one IPython notebook, uh, this is going to be the code that you can actually you know, follow. In my case, assuming that you already uh, download that one to your local machine. Then uh, there are a couple of uh, modules to be installed in order for this to work. And if you already installed the Geo AI packages, uh, you should have uh, Lipman already installed. Additional packages that you need to install is you know, D2Spy, and it's going to be simple uh, pip install D2Spy. For example, in your virtual environment, this is not being installed. It's going to be uh, exclamation mark uh, pip install D2Spy. Uh, in my case, I'm not going to run this because I let have installed this in my command line. And after that one, we're going to be uh, loading uh, all those in the module, leaf map, uh, D2Spy, and uh, we're going to be also using uh, PyStack in a client because uh, we're going to be pulling data set from our own stack repo. And they're also going to be uh, loading two additional uh, module. In this case, uh, we are not connecting to our data to sign instance, so you don't need this. Uh, we also have a function called the you know, clip by mask function uh, implemented in our D2Spy module. So we're going to just you know, load that one. And uh, these are the code from uh, Chi Seng's uh, example code. So by so simply running this code, uh, you're going to be loading all those. Um, uh, module to the memory. It'll take a little bit of time. Give me a second. Okay, then the, I also wrote a function to convert a bounding box to GeoJSON. Uh, later, we are going to be clipping name imagery or in any rest imagery from our stack repo uh, around our bounding box that we're going to define. 
and that function requires you know GeoJSON as an input. So I just simply wrote a function to convert you know Bbox into GeoJSON. So I'm gonna run this code. Then the, this is the same uh, code as example as uh, you know two things in example there. Uh, opening up Google Satellite images. Uh, you can just zoom into the area they are interested in, and you can just simply draw a bounding box like this. And after that one, if you run this in a code here, if you already have bounding box in a created, then that will be saved over here. Or if you haven't done it, I think uh, this bounding box already uh, pre-defined uh, in this way. This is in you know, over in Purdue campus. So just run this one. Then we are uh, querying um, uh, nape image. Okay, I need to change this one here because uh, we are querying uh, nape image. Uh, this is a uh, live <laughs> editing of you know Jupyter notebook while I'm just recording this video. So we'll be using the data science you know step report to find available auto mosaic. In this case, not auto mosaic images, uh, nape images uh, around the uh, area interest we define above. So. The code here is in a simple. We are connecting to this uh, stack API uh, URL. And if you go to stack.d2s.org, this is our stack browser where we have a multiple um, you know, collection available. Uh, the point of interest here is that we have a three dev uh, collection available that covers on the whole United States. We also have a NAEP collection available. And we also are hosting our Indiana LIDAR data product, like a LIDAR drive digital service model, LIDAR point cloud, normal light digital height model, and the digital time model, and et cetera. So this is a stack browser URL. But if you go back to uh, this code here, this is a stack API URL because you know, stack client requires this in the URL for it to work. So from here, basically, I'm saying the maximum item that I'm going to query is in a 10. We are going to be querying, uh, searching uh, NAEP imagery collection. So coming back here, if you click this in a NAEP, you're going to see this in a part here. This is going to be the you know, name of the collection. I'm just in the, the putting in here. And the bounding box is the one that we define above. And uh, from when to when, I'm just looking for you know, any images that is between uh, 2011 and 2020. Then I'm just you know, defining this one here because this is going to be the base URL because we need to turn this into actual in a few, you know, full URL later. But basically what we're doing here is that we are searching this uh, nape image, nape collection with a bounding box with this in a time window and that they will print out all those uh, you know, items that isn't available. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five items and available and I'm just gonna you know, print it out. We found nape images you know, over our area of interest, which is you know, defined by this in a bounding box. So now once you have this one, now we like to clip this into our local in you know, a folder. So I'm just grabbing the first one in this case. This is gonna be 2020, June 11th images you know, over here. So I'm just you know, collecting first one, uh, print out an asset. And if you just do so, uh, these will be the asset uh, uh, associated with that in a specific item. But the, what we need is actually image URL. So we are grabbing that image asset and uh, getting this in a full URL you know, coming from here. So this is going to be actual um, you know, URL that is you know, host out of you know, Microsoft you know, Azure. And after that, we are going to define what this in a file name for the clipped nape image is going to be and we are converting this in a bounding box into a JSON using the function that we define above and using this clip by mask function uh, input URL is going to be nape URL GeoJSON is going to be the bounding box that we define and the upper raster is an actual file name that we'd like to save this in a clip image to your local machine so once we run this code, uh, what is going to happening is that the now they just grab this uh, cloud optimized GOT file that is available from uh, Microsoft Azure. Then the, they're going to be clipping into your local machine. In this case, you can see that this is about 7.2 megabyte images that has been downloaded to your local machine. And uh, if you just run this code, then you're going to see this is an actual clip in a nape imagery. 
And uh, this is the code that she saying already demonstrated how to download the in a building data set into buildings that you JSON code. So I'm gonna run this code and uh, this will be downloaded into, let me just change the size a little bit. This in you know, a buildings that you JSON. Uh, they are downloading this in a file you know, right now. It might take a couple of seconds. Gonna give a few minutes. Still running here. Then, okay, it's taking a little bit of time. A few, few more seconds. I think it's almost done. You just saw that this uh, file size has been updated quickly. Okay, download is done. And uh, we can also get the statistics of these downloaded buildings. Now using LeapMap, we can uh, display uh, downloaded net images in a building geojson on top. So once you do so, uh, you're gonna see that this and the net imagery uh, download in a building layer is uh, overlaid and over here. But uh, you see some you know problem with this, the building layer and the net image doesn't match. I think uh, this is the part that uh, Chiseng's video tutorial was doing it, but I thought that uh, we can extend this in a video tutorial a little bit further so that we can do better alignment between build this in a building layer with uh, in a basement layer, uh, which is different from net imagery. So what I did further here is that uh, there is a misalignment bit between building footprint and imagery. So let's try to download uh, Indiana Auto imagery. Because like I mentioned earlier in our um, in the state repo, we do have Indiana Auto uh, Imagery Collection. Where is it? Indiana Auto Imagery. Essentially, we have a uh, you know the county auto mosaic available for whole Indiana. There is a, there is a lot of them. And uh, what we are doing here is using pretty much the same thing. Now the collection is going to be not there in a nape. Coming back to this Indiana Auto. Uh, the collection name is we just you know also over here probably should have changed it into Indiana also to be more specific but at this moment this Indiana author immediate collection is named this and also so you need to copy this one and I paste that one here and uh, I'm just expanding this time window to be 2011 to 2024 and uh, we don't need this uh, stack browser based URL because you know this item has in you know, a full URL. So maybe it might be a good idea to delete this uh, auto code at the top uh, when we are doing a query here because this is uh, really is uh, something we don't need. So coming down here, uh, if we run this in a code, then the we found one, two, three, four, five in you know, at the items available over the in you know, a bounding box and also time window with this first part above. And uh, we are gonna grab the first item in this case, which is, which is gonna be Tippecano County 2023 also. And if you just uh, print it out, I'm just you know, printing all the asset name and auto images is the name of the asset. So I'm just replacing that auto image over here. It was in the name images before, or it was image before for the name. Simply changing this in you know, auto image into this part here, then we are gonna get actual you know, full URL to this uh, auto imagery. Then the specifying output of the auto, clipped auto file, same process here. I'm just you know, clipping this into my local machine. And this clipping is done. If you go to auto data, we have clipped auto, which has 111 megabyte, is you know, clipped into the local machine. Then I'm just overlaying this in you know, a building layer on top of Indiana also. I just do so. Then you're gonna see, let me just zoom in a little bit. You're gonna see that this alignment is actually um, much better than the images, but not still perfect. Uh, if you look at this in a layer carefully, this building also image, the rectification has not been done perfectly as you can see you know we are not supposed to see this side of the building but uh, because this uh, rectification is not done 100 percent correct that's the reason why there isn't a misalignment still uh, this is in a much better alignment than uh, name imagery 
as you can see, some of these in you know, the lower buildings, much is done very well, but some of the tall buildings, you know, the rectification was not done, you know, perfectly. So what we can do further here is that in this uh, step report that we got, we have uh, additional data collection. Uh, one of them is an uh, Indiana normal ID time model that is derived from Indiana LIDAR data set. So I'm just uh, looking for, you know, going through the same process, searching uh, this in uh, NDHM uh, data collection. Uh, we don't need this base URL anymore. Uh, simply grabbing the first item getting the actual URL and uh, save this into LIDAR data clip mdhm.tif uh, using this in a VBOX GeoJSON and clipping into actual and local file and go to this in our LIDAR data here. You see that uh, we have a clipped MDHM layer has been displayed over here. And uh, now we can display all, um, all of them together. So I'm just displaying NAP imagery, Indiana Auto 2023, and also LIDAR NDHM uh, 2018. As you can see from here, Indiana LIDAR data set is collected in 2018. That's the reason why I'm adding over there. And I'm also overlaying these uh, buildings on top. And zooming in, uh, let me just turn off all the other layers so that we can show how they are different. So this is an example of uh, NAVE imagery. Okay, uh, this is an example of uh, Indiana also. And if I just turn on this uh, DTM or and not sorry, uh, normal ID time model, now this building uh, boundary layer aligns with this in a building almost perfectly. And uh, I think that this shows this is a good example where. You know, not uh, perfectly, you know, rectified images uh, may uh, cause those uh, misalignment issues, you know, between uh, vector layer. But with that, I hope this was a you know, useful video, and I'm planning to make uh, more videos like this uh, after uh, following to uh, Chisang's tutorial, and hope you know we can make you know more video that is going to be useful for you. So thank you very much. I will see you next time.